So thank you again for uh, inviting me at this uh, webinar. I'm really pleased to talk to you all. Uh, my name is, uh, as already said, uh, Nemanja Testic. I'm coming from the Institute of uh, Food Technology, a colleague of Alena that gave a first speech. And I'll be talking a little bit about uh, carotenoids and uh, allergic acid extraction with uh, natural deep eutetic solvents and their potential application in the cosmetic industry. So this is something that we already heard many times, but I think it's always nice to have some figures in mind. Uh, so it's bio-waste and actually when talking about uh, bio-waste, I would like to focus on food waste and agricultural waste as well. Uh, some figures are then in European Union, 89 million tons of uh, food waste is annually generated, around 38% uh, from the manufacturer and 42% uh, from the household. In Serbia, which is a relatively small country, we generate around uh, 250 tons of waste and of food waste. And something uh, that scares me a little bit is that uh, around 30% of food is wasted. And having in mind, in mind this drought, drought, severe drought that we have in Europe, in Serbia also, and having lower yield uh, crops, uh, I think it's a quite big issue. And on the other hand, we have agricultural waste uh, in the European Union, around uh, 700 million tons of agricultural waste is uh, generated. And all this is a problem, but it is also opportunity to create some uh, sources uh, of bioenergy. And we are all uh, hearing that uh, Europe particularly having a lot of uh, issues with energy uh, this winter. So it could be one way to tackle these problems, but also another uh, way to valorize this uh, waste of so food and agricultural waste is to extract some valuable uh, chemicals like uh, polyphenols, proteins, lipids, etc., and to use them as alternative source for uh, pharmaceutical, cosmetic, or food industry. Uh, not only that we could use this waste, uh, we could also uh, develop some uh, new extraction strategies and uh, uh, we also need to keep in mind that they need to be sustainable, so we need to follow the concept of green uh, chemistry. I'm not going to go into details because Alena already talked about this, but that's why we decided in our project uh, to, to use uh, NADES, uh, which are, as we already know, uh, hydrogen, uh, made of hydrogen bond donors and acceptors. And uh, there are actually a lot of uh, different combination of NADES, which makes them uh, pretty uh, suitable for broad uh, application. Uh, they are also good because they have a good chemical thermal stability. In some cases, we don't need initial purification steps, as uh, we will see, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that makes them as a perfect uh, solvent, at least to try with, to tackle the green chemistry. And now uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, two experiments that we uh, conducted on our um, project, but uh, as a small disclaimer, uh, we are coming from the Institute of Food Technology. So we were more based on the food application, but uh, as you will uh, hear, uh, the bioactive compound that uh, we try to extract could uh, also be applied in uh, cosmetic industry, so not only the food industry. In the first uh, experiment, uh, we used the uh, hydrophobic uh, NADES to extract uh, carotenoids uh, from the pumpkin pulp. Uh, to be honest, uh, this uh, pulp, pumpkin pulp was not a uh, food industry byproduct, but uh, we are aware that at least in Serbia, uh, there is a um, production of pumpkin cubes and the residuals of this uh, production, which are uh, generated as, as a waste are peels and residual pulp that uh, could be also used uh, as we believe, but we didn't test it, uh, as a raw material to accept characters uh, from, uh, from, from this source. On the other hand, uh, this is something that we actually obtained it from, from the factory. Uh, the second uh, raw material are rosemary seeds. Rosemary is particularly interesting uh, for us because uh, Serbia is one of the biggest uh, producers of the, of the rosemary. So there is a significant amount of rosemary seeds, which are actually byproduct from uh, rosemary pulp uh, production. And uh, this uh, raw material could be used to extract uh, allergic acid, uh, 
by using uh, some uh, hydrophilic uh, nades and more about that in the following slides. Uh, why these uh, components can be used also in the cosmetic industry. And uh, first of all, carotenoids uh, are antioxidants and they have a photo uh, protection activity and they are already used uh, in a sun cream uh, product. On the other hand, the allergic that is coming uh, from the rosemary seeds is, uh, are all, is already used in uh, uh, skin whitening products like creams and lotions due to an antioxidant activity that the allergic acid has, has and uh, due to incubation of uh, tyrannase, which um, inhibits the production of melanin. So that's why allergic acid has uh, been widely used in skin, uh, skin whitening products. A little bit about uh, results that we already published. Um, so in the first experiment, uh, the first part of this experiment was uh, to do some NADIS uh, screening. So to select uh, the best NADIS, we use uh, 10 NADIS, uh, hydro, uh, hydrophobic. They were made of uh, fatty acids, uh, different kinds of fatty acids or uh, menthol and uh, fatty acids. And uh, we use them to uh, extract carotenoids with a solid liquid extraction. And we tested all uh, NADIS in terms of beta carotene solubility and the extraction efficiency. And uh, as you could see on the, on the slide, the, the best performing NADIS was uh, made of uh, C10 and uh, C, uh, C8 and C10 fatty acid molar ratio three to one and having beta, uh, beta carotene solubility uh, around 200 uh, micro, uh, micrograms per milliliter, which was particularly interested, uh, interesting because uh, we already uh, did the same extraction, but with hexane, which is uh, considered as a standard organic, uh, as, uh, uh, organic solvent to extract uh, non-polar components as uh, carotenoids are, and the solubility in hexane was only 107 micrograms microgram per millimeter. So the best performing NADIS was uh, around two, time, two, two times uh, better comparing to hexane. And extraction efficiency with this uh, NADIS was uh, 96.7 uh, microgram per milliliter. And one of the question uh, that Alena had was, uh, did we try to use a combination of several extraction techniques? And yes, we actually used this uh, best performing NADIS and uh, try to optimize uh, ultrasound extraction in order to increase the obtained concentration of beta of carotenoids in, in extract. And uh, as you could see, we try to vary the three uh, variables, temperature, ultrasound power, and the solvent to solid uh, ratio. And as you can see, the best performing uh, experiment was uh, with uh, 45 degrees uh, 60% of ultrasound and solvent to solid ratio of seven, achieving around uh, 146 uh, micrograms per milliliter, indicating that indeed, uh, when we couple the ultrasound extraction uh, with uh, NADIS, uh, the concentration of uh, carotenoids was even higher. Then in the, in the last step, uh, we try to optimize uh, this extraction even further by using response surface methodology and artificial neural networks. And uh, we concluded that the best uh, performing uh, experimental uh, conditions were 50 degrees, ultrasonic power of 60, and the uh, solvent to uh, solid ratio of uh, 7 milligram, uh, milliliters per gram for 10 minutes. And uh, this result was also validated, uh, and we achieved 151. Uh, microgram per milliliter. Another interesting uh, uh, topic that uh, Alan already tackled was um, recovery of carotenoids uh, from, um, from the NADES by using water and ammonium hydroxide. But one thing that uh, she didn't mention is that um, in the, as you could see on this figure, uh, in the excerpt, we have uh, we have uh, lutein, beta carotene, and I cannot see this last one. Okay, cryptoxanthin. 
Uh, and what is interesting that actually uh, on the third figure, we could see uh, which rep uh, this first figure represents uh, the extract, so the chromatogram of extract, while the third one uh, represents uh, the chromatogram of crystals. So we could see that uh, concentration of lutein uh, was uh, much lower in the crystals comparing to extract, which uh, means that. Uh, by this recovery of uh, carotenoids, we could also try to somehow um, separate carotenoids. Why this happened? Because lutein is more polar comparing to uh, beta carotene and uh, cryptosanctin. So we were able even to fractionize somehow uh, uh, these, uh, these compounds. In our next experiment, as I already mentioned, we tried to extract elagic acid uh, from the rosemary seeds. But uh, in the rosemary seeds, most of the elagic acid is uh, bonded in uh, elagitanin. So uh, that's why uh, they needed to be hydrolyzed uh, in, order to be, in order to be active. So idea was we need to do some kind of a hydrolyzation. Uh, we also, we tried to use acidic nadis because uh, we wanted to create acidic, um, acidic uh, atmosphere and uh, try to, uh, to hydrolyze uh, elagic acid to a higher degree uh, than comparing to some, let's say, traditional uh, extraction uh, solvents like ethanol, where you actually, when you're using ethanol, you are only extracting free elagic acid, while when we use uh, this acidic nadis, uh, we not only extract free elagic acid, but we also uh, try to free some of the elagic acid from the elagitanins. Like in the first experiment, uh, first we did the um, selection of nadis and we tried, uh, we tested the 10 different nadis made of uh, lactic acid, uh, malic acid, tartaric acid, citric acid. So some of the components that uh, could be uh, used in food industry and also the betaine was the betaine or sugars and water in some case uh, were other components. And uh, we uh, tested them in terms of total polyphenols, DPPH and elagic acid recovery from the plant and elagic acid concentration within the, the extract. And also what we wanted to see, uh, we tested um, the, uh, we did the, uh, the hydrolyzation also with two molar hot cell in uh, methanol because uh, we wanted to see uh, what is the real efficiency of this acidic, um, acidic nadis comparing to some uh, mineral, mineral acids uh, which should have a higher uh, yield of elagic acid and which was even proved later on. And uh, what we can conclude from this uh, first screening phase is that um, in terms of elagic acid uh, recovery and the uh, concentration of elagic acid in extract, all uh, selected nadis were better comparing to, to the ethanol solution. And uh, we also compared to ethanol because uh, ethanol is something, is, is solvent that uh, most of the researchers are using uh, to obtain the, ex the extract, which could later on be utilized in cosmetics or food, et cetera, because ethanol is considered as a, as a safe um, solvent. And also this is another uh, interesting uh, pic picture where uh, this first sample corresponds to this sample, second to the second, etc. cetera. And uh, this, so this first 10 are the nadis, while this sample is um, um, ethanol, uh, so excerpt of ethanol. And even by the color, uh, you could see that in uh, this, uh, then in this uh, extract, which was extracted by ethanol, there is a lower concentration of um, bioactive compounds. In the, in the second, and yes, I forgot to, to, to mention, a very important thing, that the best performing um, NADIS was uh, citric acid, uh, betaine and water in molar ratio 2, 1, 2, which made us really happy because uh, Citric acid is already allowed and even better uh, to be used in food, but also in, in, in 
in cosmetic products. So with this uh, extract, we could uh, we don't need uh, well we didn't test it, we, but we probably don't need any additional purification step because all of the ingredients are already already allowed to be used in the final products. So after we selected um, the best performing Nardis, uh, same is same like in the per, in the first experiment, we tried to select uh, some of the most important uh, variables. And I forgot to say that uh, in the screening uh, part, and actually in all of these experiments, we use solid liquid extraction. We didn't combine with the ultrasounds of, or, or actually we did combine with the ultrasounds, but uh, the results were not that good, which was uh, pretty uh, surprising to us. So that's why we continue with the solid liquid extraction. So uh, as I said, um, we tested the several um, variables, which was uh, temperature, moles of citric acid in the Nades, water content time, and the uh, Nades to plant ratio. And the, the three most uh, relevant uh, factors were uh, Nades to plant ratio, temperature, and uh, extraction time. So that's why we went to the final extraction um, optimization process, uh, where we uh, varied the te temperature, time, and now this plant ratio. And from the data that we got, uh, we concluded that we could have uh, two types of, uh, let's say, optimal condition. The first one is more uh, clear in the experiment number seven, where we use 85 degrees, 100 uh, minutes, and 35 grams of nadis per plant, where actually here we have uh, the highest recovery of ellagic acid from the plant material. But on the other hand, uh, the uh, ellagic acid concentration within the, the extract was, uh, was lower. So uh, this set of experiments we could uh, use if we want to exhaust uh, the plant material more. While the, the second set, which was uh, number 14, from the, from the result, we could see that uh, recovery of ellagic acid from the plant was not that successful, but on the other hand, the um, concentration of ellagic acid in the extract uh, was significantly higher. So we, we have two ways depending whether we want a higher recovery or a higher concentration of ellagic acid in, in uh, extract. And of course, so like in the first experiment, uh, we validated uh, this data, but apart from uh, two optimal um, solutions that I already talked about. We also tried to uh, use a third optimal solution because we noticed that if you increase the temperature, it is more likely that you will have even higher allergic acid uh, concentration. So we tried to use uh, even higher uh, than we initially uh, uh, did in our experimental domain by 95 degrees and longer extraction time. And the results were, let's say, somewhat satisfying, as we expected in the so, uh, in the sample optimal one. We had the higher uh, recovery of extraction, ellagic acid the, from the plant, while in the other two cases, particularly in the third, where, where we increased the temperature and the uh, time of extraction, we had uh, the highest um, concentration of ellagic acid in extra. And uh, this is some figure that I really like and because uh, it, it really tells you that uh, by the difference in the color, uh, there is a significant difference in, in uh, concentration of bioactive compounds where you can see dark, dark red comparing to some yellow, yellowish brown of uh, ex ethanolic extract. So by uh, doing all this, uh, we believe that uh, since we used all ingredients that are already, uh, which could already be used in the cosmetic products, we believe that uh, these extracts are ready, ready to use. Uh, they are strong acid antioxidants as, we, as it was approved by the DPPH. Uh, they could also serve as a acidic re regulator and uh, citric acid is also used in cosmetic products to be an acidic regulator. This is something that uh, maybe could uh, be a problem, at least for the cosmetic industry, for food industry, it's good. 
uh, that this kind of extract could be a natural colorant. Uh, I'm aware that uh, most of the cosmetic products are white, greens, etc. So maybe this color could actually in cosmetic be problem, but that is the state of art currently that we have. So by using this extract, we believe that we could avoid some of the additives and maybe produce some cleaner labels, which are uh, satisfy the consumers. Uh, all of this and even more you could uh, find in, in this already published papers by our group and there are some others as well so feel free to check them or to contact me. We have some questions once again our team and uh, I would like to thank also to uh, Professor uh, Rito Duarte because part of this second experiment was uh, performed in Portugal with, uh, with her and her colleagues and we are really grateful that we had uh, such a nice collaboration. That would be all for now. Thank you and uh, I'm open for the questions.